What's up guys, this episode we're diving into an advanced feature in Active Storage where we're gonna be creating a new previewer. So previewers are classes that can process your uploaded files and create a preview image for them. And built in into Rails by default, there are three, and they handle PDFs and videos. And that's all they really do right now. So we're gonna create one that treats presentations as previewable. And so we'll extract a preview image from presentations like PowerPoints, uh, keynotes, any other kind of presentation format that our tool understands. And the tool that we're using is LibreOffice. This is an open office suite, it's open source. Um, basically, it is uh, what we'll use on the command line to convert our presentations into an image. And we're gonna do this on the server side so that we don't have to load their GUI. It will just all run in the command line. And so that's what you need to look for if you're trying to build one of these yourself. You need something that runs in the command line. And just to point out here, we're not gonna dive into this in much detail, but if you wanna see any of the previewers built into Rails, Active Storage Lib, Active Storage Previewers, where those live inside the repository. And you can take a look at how these are built. I just wanna point out two things here that are important. You need a class method called accept, so that this returns a Boolean yes or not, and yes or no, will we process the file that was just uploaded. Um, you need to check for the correct content type and whether or not your required executable is installed. And then this preview method, which is actually the, where the real work happens, you download the original file and then you convert it to an image and then you upload that image. So that's all you have to implement to build your own previewer. Let's dive into building our own and we'll get into the details of how this works. So let's create a new Rails app. I'm gonna use my Rails app template so that we have Devise and Bootstrap and some things installed already. But all you really need is a Rails 5.2 application that has active storage installed in it. So we're going to create this application and then run Rails active storage install once it's done. Now that that's done, we'll run Rails Active Storage install to get that installed and then we'll run Rails DB migrate to create our migrations and all of that. Now we can get started with adding our uploadable files. What I'm gonna do is run generate scaffold. We're gonna have a slide deck as our model. Let's just call it, yeah, let's call it slide deck. We'll have a name and we'll have an upload that we'll create with active storage. So we'll run Rails DB migrate to create that. Let's go to our routes. We'll have our slide decks up there. Move that down and then we can have slide decks index as our root. Our slide deck model can has one attached presentation. And so that will be the file that gets uploaded with it. And then in our form, our slide decks are gonna need to be able to do a file upload. So we'll change this to a file field of presentation and change the label on it. And then our slide decks controller um, will need to permit the presentation here as well. So we'll have presentation. And once we have that, we can go load up our Rails server and create a new slide deck. So we have the ability to create uh, an upload file, so I'm just gonna upload a PowerPoint X file, and this doesn't do anything right now. There's no display for it or anything. So we can go to our show action, and we can add a section here maybe for the preview. So we'll add preview. We'll have an image tag for this. This is for presentation, and we want the preview, and we want to resize this to say 400 by 400. You always have to pass in some sort of option like this to figure out what size it's going to be. And then that's going to give us some sort of error. And the reason we get this error is because it's unpreviewable. So if you try to call preview and there isn't a matching previewer, it will throw an exception. And so that's what's happening here. So we need to define our previewer that matches this content type and does all of that. Now, one of the things that we can do is we can look at active storage blobs dot, or blob.last, and we can look at the content type for this. So we can say content type. 
So this content type describes your .pptx files that come from PowerPoint, um, but we can also support keynotes, we can support the older .ppt files, and other types of content types for presentations. So you wanna Google and see what your content types are, or try uploading your own and seeing what the application content types are. Um, but we're gonna specifically implement this one and then go check some more later on. So we'll just copy this to the clipboard, have access to it in just a minute as we create our preview. So to create our previewer, we wanna create a folder inside app and I'm gonna call it previewers just out of convenience. And then we can edit app previewers and we can create a file called presentation previewer. And inside here, we can create a class called presentation previewer. This is gonna inherit from the active storage previewer. And we need to define our class uh, def accept blob method. This is going to be where we check our blob content type against that string that we just grabbed. And in the future, we can adjust this to accept those other PowerPoint types. But we also want to check to see if our uh, LibreOffice is installed. So we'll have LibreOffice exists as a method, we'll create LibreOffice exists, and here we'll do a similar sort of check to what the Mu PDF Tools one does. So here we'll have a LibreOffice path method and allow you to override this, and in this case it's super important for this, so active storage .paths LibreOffice or S Office and the reason for this is because S Office is apparently the version for the Mac, the executable name. On Linux, I guess it's LibreOffice. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't tested this on Linux yet. But you can also override the path by setting active storage.paths LibreOffice explicitly. So now I'm just gonna paste in a copy from the Mu PDF tools of the exist function with some change variable names. Basically, this is going to see, if you've already run this command, don't do it again, but we will check to see if the version command runs without any errors, and so that's when the exit status is zero. And if that ran successfully, then we know LibreOffice is uh, installed and pointing to the right path and then we can go ahead and run this command. So then we need to implement our preview command and have it capture that file. Now pretty much the same as the last method, we're going to grab this from the Mu PDF example, so we're following the same kind of approach that they are. So in this case, we want to generate the temp file, we want to draw first page from, and we will want to implement that method, which will do the heavy lifting for us. So we'll have draw first page from, that's going to take our file, and then we will go ahead and figure out how to draw that file. So the Mu PDF example is actually printing out to standard out. So its command gets run and then the standard out gets captured in the draw command and then it gets passed to the block. And so unfortunately we can't quite do that and ours just needs to be a little bit more complicated because LibreOffice does not allow you to print it out the output to standard out. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of a different style. So ours is going to be grabbing the directory where the file.durname of the file path is. So this file path, we wanna grab the directory for it. We also want the base name of that file. So file.base name, file.path, and we're going to give it dot asterisk to remove the, um, the file extension, and so that we can have our PNG file here, which is gonna be a file.join directory and base name dot png. And so that's what will be output, and this is a full file um, path. So then we can call system self.class.libreoffice path, so we can get that executable path from this function above that we wrote. Then we can pass in our options, which is headless, invisible, convert to PNG, and we want the outdir equal to directory, 
and file.path will be our input file. And so that's going to create a new PNG in the same directory as our temp file. And then we can use the draw command with cat. So cat just takes the contents of a file and prints it to standard out. So we're going to create the PNG one step ahead, then print out that PNG so the draw command can capture it. And so that will be our PNG file. And then we'll pass in and block here. And so we have to have and block as one of the arguments up here so that it will be able to call this line of code um, later on in the draw command. So that is that. And then last but not least, we can say file.delete PNG file um, and clean it up ourselves manually. So we can make sure that that file does not get left on our server because we don't want our server to run out of disk space when we've created all these PNG files that we've never cleaned up before. So last but not least, we need to create config initializers active storage.rb and we want to add rails.application.config.active storage.previewers and shovel on the presentation previewer. So that's gonna make sure that it gets added to the list and checked every single time. And lastly, we can optionally add in config active storage dot paths, and you could define the LibreOffice executable location in here. And now on the Mac, um, the application uh, path is actually this one. So it's in applications, LibreOffice.app, contents, macOS, S office, not LibreOffice for whatever reason. So I'm gonna paste that in here and our presentation previewer should probably default to say LibreOffice if that's the one that's going to be used on like Ubuntu. Um, and we don't want probably the S office version of that for the Mac, or we could actually check the operating system inside this method and choose the default. But we should always default to, if this is defined in the paths options, we should use that one because the user has configured that one themselves and overridden the default. So we should actually fall back to one of these other ones that is more sane, and your uh, version of your previewer can do whatever you want here. Just kind of make sure that it defaults to the executable name so that in case it's in the path, then it will be automatically used. So that is all we're going to do there to change our config. And if we restart our Rails application, we should be able to go back to our app and refresh the page and run through all this code and see the previewed image. So if you refresh the page and we have a broken image in this case and what we can do is take a look at our logs to see what went wrong. Now in our logs we can see a stack trace and that is part of the request to grab this active storage route. And so it grabs that and it begins to run our previewer and then it crashes because it's run our previewer, it's inserted a new blob for our image PNG version of the content type. Um, and all of that is good. All of our code ran successfully, except when it got to the resize, we didn't have the mini magic gem installed in our application. So this is all we need to do. We need to add mini magic to our gem file and we will be good to go. We can refresh the page and it should work this time. So if you ran into any errors, maybe you made a typo, or you called the wrong function or something, then you will see in a very similar stack trace, whenever that image does not get displayed correctly, you can take a look at your Rails logs and figure out exactly what went wrong. Now I've installed Mini Magic, and we can see that our image preview has worked uh, successfully, and now we can see that that works with these PowerPoints, which is really cool. So last but not least, if you ever wanted your previewer to support multiple content types, you can actually grab your content types and put them in a constant inside of your class. And then you can just list out the ones that you want to support here. And so I'll make a note, this is for PPTX files. There's actually one called application X Ole storage. Um, which is the old PPT files, but unfortunately this one actually would accidentally trigger if you had, I believe, um, an old XLS-like spreadsheet and maybe old doc files. 
Now this one of course I'm going to leave commented out because it's too generic and actually is probably a bug that is overriding the original content type which is more which is more descriptive usually it usually says Excel or PowerPoint in it and you should be able to grab that out um, but unfortunately that is how it is right now and so there's probably a bug that gets fixed in the MIME types um, wherever that is being called inside active storage so that gets cleaned up. So um, that is it for this episode. Unfortunately, Keynote files from the Mac can't really be opened by LibreOffice and uh, most of the recommendations are just to export as PowerPoint files and open those. So if you make changes to this file, you're probably gonna need to restart your Rails server so that it gets reloaded correctly, but uh, that is all there is to it. It's really straightforward to build your own previewer and uh, I hope that we see a lot more of these. We should be able to package them up as a gem and then have them automatically included into your previewers um, just with a rail tie. And so if you wanna see an episode on creating an active storage previewer gem, let me know in the comments below and we can get to that in a future episode. Until then, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.